Hi, my name is Kevin Eckenhoff, and today I'm going to be talking about Schmidt EKF based visual inertial moving object tracking. The problem of estimating the motion of a sensor platform as it moves through some unknown environment is well studied. However, in many scenarios, we're not just interested in our own motion, but also that of other moving objects in the scene. As such, in this work, we seek to simultaneously track the ego motion of a platform as well as the 3D pose of a moving rigid body target using only low cost and lightweight cameras and an inertial measurement unit. The problem of using cameras in an IMU to estimate the motion is known as visual inertial odometry, or VIO. In it, we seek to estimate the orientation, position, and velocity of the platform, as well as the gyro and accelerometer biases which corrupt the IMU measurements. In addition, because we are performing target tracking, we're interested in the target's orientation and position, as well as a set of motion parameters which describe how the target's state evolves forward in time. In total, we seek to gain the highest accuracy possible by fit formulating a single joint estimation problem which seeks to estimate the IMU states and the target states given all measurements collected. In this work, we use a single extended common filter to do this. In order to use an EKF, then, we need to define how the states evolve in time and how our measurements are a function of the state in order to formulate the EKF propagation and update. For propagation, it's well known how to utilize the noisy IMU readings provided by the gyroscope and accelerometer to predict the IMU state forward in time. For the target, we don't have such access to direct information of how its state is evolving. Instead, we assume a motion model which says that the target's state at a future time is a function of its current state as well as some model noises. An example motion model would be constant local velocity, where we say that the model parameters to be estimated are the velocity and angular velocity of the platform. Now, in real-world scenarios, no target will actually truly follow this model exactly. As such, instead of modeling these parameters as static, we actually model them as random walks which are allowed to evolve in time. By controlling the noise characteristics of this random walk, we can then control how closely we assume the target follows a given model. Intuitively, for very low noises, we say that it very closely follows the model, while for very large noises driving the random walks, we say that these parameters are allowed to evolve rapidly in time, and it does not closely follow the model. In order to formulate the EKF update, we need to know what kind of information the camera provides. As the camera collects images, we can track the motion of 2D projections on the image plane, which correspond to 3D points in a scene. Some of these points correspond to the static environment and thus can be processed in the standard VIO manner. However, we now have a new set of measurements corresponding to a set of features that are moving due to the fact that they lie on the target's body. However, if we assume that the target is a rigid body, we can say that all features as expressed in the local target frame, remain fixed. As such, all these target measurements can be expressed as a function of the moving camera and target poses, as well as the static target feature position. Because we don't know the target's point cloud a priori, we add these positions as additional variables to be estimated in our state. Therefore, we can now express all measurements as a function of our state, and therefore we can perform the EKF update. Now, the assumption that we've made that has motivated our choice of a joint estimator is that we have accurate noise values for the motion model. However, in many real-world scenarios, we may not know how closely a target follows a given motion model. As such, we now seek to investigate the effect of these model choices. To do so, we perform a simulation where a stereo visual inertial rig performed target tracking of a moving planar target. Although all trajectories used were the same, we performed a parameter sweep over different assumed motion model levels utilized by the filter during target propagation. All we can see as compared to VIO alone, which does not leverage target information, incorporating the target estimates into our filter while using proper noise values for the target's motion leads to improved performance of the IMU estimates as compared to VIO alone and also leads to very accurate target estimates. However, we can also now see the danger of a joint estimator. We can see if the target model is overconfident, that is, these noise values are chosen too low that don't reflect the actual reality of the system, we can actually see severe degradation in the accuracy of both the IMU and target pose. 
This can be seen very clearly in the consistency plots, where we plot the error achieved by an estimator versus the three sigma bounds. A consistent estimator's errors should stay within these bounds. We can see that as compared to VIO alone, shown in blue, VIO plus target tracking when using a proper noise values for the target, as shown in red, is not only also consistent, but its uncertainty is reduced as compared to the standard VIO. This is showing that the target information that has been added to the system is increasing the accuracy and increasing the certainty of the estimator. However, we can see that if we add an inconsistent model, as shown in black, this destroys both the consistency and the accuracy of the IMU pose estimation and will also lead to destruction of the accuracy of the target estimation. To handle the realistic scenario where you may not know what noise values to use for a given target, we propose to instead utilize a Schmidt common filter or SKF, which is a modification of the standard common filter. In the standard EKF, whenever we receive any measurement, we would update both the target and tracking robot states, as well as their joint covariance. Utilizing the SKF, we can partition our state into two, the tracking and the standard VIO or robot states. Now, if we receive a target measurement, we can purposefully not update the robot states using this measurement while still fully updating the target estimates, as well as updating the target correlation with the IMU without updating the marginal covariance of the IMU. What this means is that the resulting VIO estimates are equivalent to if the target information had been thrown away. However, we still model all correlations between the target and the IMU in a consistent and conservative fashion. If we now reprocess this data using this SKF method, we can see that no matter the motion model chosen, the IMU achieves the same accuracy results. In addition, because the IMU is not drifting in these scenarios, the target estimation is still accurate even if we use a very poor model, thus showing that the SKF is a much more robust choice when model uncertainty plays a big role. In order to validate our proposed system in a real-world scenario, we need to be able to distinguish in a given image stream what pixels correspond to the target and which correspond to the static environment in order to be able to partition our tracked features into two sets. To do this, we labeled a series of pictures of a RC car and from this trained a network to output a mask prediction which told us which pixels in the image corresponded to the target and which did not. In total, we can see the entire estimator performance. On the left, we see the tracking front end, where both environmental and target features are tracked independently. The resulting output estimates are shown on the right, where we plot the VIO trajectory in green versus the ground truth Vicon trajectory, shown in blue, as well as the tracked target pose and target point cloud, shown in white, its trajectory, shown in purple as well as the ground truth trajectory provided by Vicon, and we can see very accurate estimation performance. To test the robustness of the system, we process this data using, again, a purposefully overconfident model for the target. That is, we expect it to be inconsistent and to harm VIO accuracy. Indeed, we see that if we perform tightly coupled EKF estimation, we actually get much higher errors than our proposed robust SKF based system, which despite the model errors, yields very accurate IMU and target tracking performance. In conclusion, we've investigated the effect of tight coupling on visual inertial ego motion and target tracking performance. We showed that while a proper noise model for the target leads to improved localization performance over VIO alone, overconfident model selection can actually severely degrade estimation performance. To protect ourselves from this scenario and to make our estimator more robust, we propose to leverage schmidt kalman filtering to prevent target measurements from updating the IMU state while still conservatively and consistently modeling all correlations. Finally, the proposed system was validated in a real-world visual inertial moving object experiment.